Hello, hello, it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Celebration Spotlight Day 6. We are counting down the days until the end of Celebration. So this is the sixth video we have done in our daily series, spotlighting all of the Celebration gift options. So on day one, we did paper blooms. We shared a project using Darling Donkeys, Approaching Perfection, and also Ombre Designer Paper, Corner Bouquet. Yesterday, we did Heal Your Heart, and today, I'm going going to show you some fun projects using the flower and field designer paper. Look at those fun bright colors in this designer paper. This is one of my favorite celebration gifts that you can choose for free when you order $50 or more and you can do that in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. So if you haven't gotten this already and you want it, make sure that you order by February 28th. That is Sunday. So you have just a little bit of time. The technique I'm going to show you today you can use with any designer paper so if you're watching this video after celebration has ended and you missed out on this fun paper no worries choose any designer paper that you want this designer paper flower and field comes in 12 by 12 pages I've cut it down so that I can show you these bright fun patterns so we've got a black background with these bright flowers on one side and then on the opposite side we have some really great patterns I love that black is the dominant color in this paper because that's something unusual. Usually we have paper that has white, white backgrounds. So I think this makes it fun to make some really bright and bold cards. I'm going to show you some samples. Let me do that really quick. We'll, we'll do the samples first and then we'll do our technique. So I've, I have had a lot of fun, <laughs> um, especially pairing the donkeys with the flower and field designer paper. This one I just made last night. The um, card design is from Lisa Curcio, and I also made one with the pink paper. I can't decide which one I like better. Leave me a comment and let me know. Do you like the pink or the white and the blue? Pink and black or white and blue? This or that? Um, I really can't decide. I'm just kind of mixed on both of them because they're just so cute. Here are some more donkeys with the flower and field designer paper. Just Jade. I love that color in here. This is um, shaded spruce with seaside spray and misty moonlight. And then cherry cobbler here with flirty flamingo. Same colors over there as that that card. And then I did some double wonder cards with the flower and field designer paper. So here are some of those cards. This is the approaching perfection happy birthday. This similar layout here from um, Sandy Carlson. This card is by Mary McCormick. I made this one we shared that layout a few weeks ago during Thursday Night Live. This was another project that we made with a fun banner. I mixed it with the uh, Blossoms in Bloom from the annual catalog. Here's a fun little pocket. This little tag comes out of the pocket card by Deb Schneider. And she used the Oso oh Ombre designer paper paired with the Flower and Field. Such a great one. This one is by Eva White. I love how she cut out some of the flowers from the designer paper to bring that along to the other side of the card. Here's when I used the Touch of Ink stamp set along with the stripes from the uh, flower and field paper. And I love how the glittered organdy ribbon goes with this designer paper with all the black background. Such a great one. This one is by Barb Hopper. If I remember right, I don't know where her name went. Um, oh, I guess that's our last card. Okay, so, so many different ways that you can use this designer paper. I think it is an awesome paper to highlight and be the star of the show, or it just works as a great background for some images like cute donkeys or beautiful flowers. So the technique I'm gonna show you today, like I said, you don't need this designer paper. You can do this with any designer paper. Um, and I cut strips of this. I cut, um, I think I had like a six by six sheet and I just cut it into sh to strips that were a half inch. So this is a technique I haven't done in a long time, um, but it's a really fun one for showing off designer paper, especially when there's so many patterns that you love. This technique is called herringbone or faux quilt. So we're gonna take the strips of paper and we're gonna add them to um, a 
and a piece of cardstock and arrange it in that herringbone or faux quilt way. So one thing that is really handy for doing this technique is the adhesive sheets. Now, this was the first time that I had opened up this new package. We've had some different variations of adhesive sheets in the past. This is the new one. It's 152334 if you want to get this to make the technique at home. And um, so I cut a piece of white cardstock and a piece of adhesive sheet to be the same size. So this is three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. I'll put the measurements in the video description when we're all done. So um, one thing I noticed about these adhesive sheets, they're a little bit different from the last one. And when I tried to peel it off to stick it under the card, like it came off in these whole strips. The sticky is on the part I'm peeling off instead of on the part here. So that's not a problem at all. You'll just have to do it in the little strips. So I'm going to peel that off and then apply it to the cardstock. So essentially what I want to do is I want to make my entire piece of cardstock sticky. Okay, so I'm just transferring over the adhesive sheet one section, oh, one section at a time. It is really super sticky. Oh, I think I got a little glob there. That's fine. And then the last section. Okay. So it is like hanging over a little bit and it, that's fine. We just need the whole thing to be sticky because we're going to put paper strips across the entire piece of cardstock. So you can just use liquid adhesive or your snail or your seal, um, but it's so much easier when you can just apply adhesive to the entire thing. So now we're going to take, well, let's give it a good massage. We wanna make sure that all the adhesive that's on the sheet sticks to the cardstock. And then we're going to peel back the um the paper backing and now we have the sticky cardstock so the, the adhesive sheets work really great if you are um, die cutting a really detailed image you can put the adhesive sheets on your cardstock and then die cut so that your detailed die cut already has adhesive on it that's a really great way to use the adhesive sheets. Okay, so now we're going to take our strips of designer paper and we're going to create a pattern. So I'm just gonna start and go across. There's really no white, right or wrong way to do this. Um, and so you just wanna butt them right up next to each other. And I kind of like having the patterns go different ways. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my my strip here and kind of come the other direction and you just keep adding the strips oh my gosh that almost matched up that's crazy look at that oh oh geez <laughs> that's okay because we're gonna cut all those edges off okay um i could go all the way here but i want to do some more strips um some more strips that are this direction so um, let's go here. We'll switch back to the stripes. And, oh no, doggies. <laughs> and the polka dots. And then let's switch again. So I really kind of like having all the, all the different directions. Really just a patchwork kind of. Okay, so you notice here I've got like a tiny little corner here and a tiny little corner there, and I do wanna fill that in, but I'm just gonna take a second and cut off all of my straggly pieces because I can reuse these. So I'm gonna use like one of these random ends to fill in those tiny little um, corners. So let's just trim all these off. I'm flipping over so I can see really easily the outline of the cardstock. Okay. Oh, we need a, like a pink stripes. There we go. Just a little corner of pink stripes there and a little corner of pink stripes here. Having that adhesive sheet, have adhesive all the way to the edges makes it really easy to add in those little bits that you need. 
Okay, let's just keep going with our pattern. If you can reuse some of these, if they're long enough, then um, you can use those. Like I said, there's really not like a right or wrong way to do this. Come down a little farther. And then let's switch back. I almost wish I'd switched back. <laughs> Can we tear it up? No, Julie, don't do it. No, it's not gonna come up. <laughs> I was gonna switch back earlier and I forgot. Um, I, start, I just kept going with that direction, but we'll do, we'll change it up here. So again, these are um, a half inch wide strips that I'm using. These patterns are just so pretty together. Okay, let's see, I think we need polka dots. Right there. And maybe a little yellow. Pushing down to make sure we get good adhesive. And just trimming off all these extra pieces. So the result is this quilt or patchwork panel. So I'm gonna, you guys know me, we're gonna keep it really simple. I have a layer of basic black cardstock. This is three and a half by four and three quarters. This is three and three quarter inches by five. So we're going to layer this on. And oh, it's so pretty, all the colors. And then I've got a stitched circle I thought we could just add, um, like a sentiment. So um, let's see. I love this happy birthday in here. We use this in another video. You are amazing. This is a stamp set that's in the January through June mini catalog. And this coordinates with um, a project kit. So I think it's easy to overlook this really fun, bright, bold set. But we're gonna use this happy birthday on the stitched shapes. And you guys remember we did the stitched shapes yesterday. So I had some extra cut and just do that happy birthday. Oh, you know what we need? That awesome glitter ribbon. Remember I told you how well this ribbon goes with the designer paper. So let's just add, oops, let's just add like a little, um, a little piece of ribbon back here. And that just, that just dresses up. Oh yes, I feel like maybe a little bit longer. Okay. I'm gonna hold it. Hold it back here. And, um, oh gosh. Where did my tearing tape go? <laughs> I think it's in the other room. I had stamp club in person last night. It was so good to see everybody. So some of my stuff is still in the kitchen where we have our, um, where we have our class. All right, now I'm going to do some Stampin' Dimensionals and we'll stick this on the card. Now, um, I, I had this idea right before I went live and I thought, oh my gosh, oh, look at that. Oh, I love it. <laughs> okay. So I had this idea right before I went live and, um, I thought it would be fun to do that nested label dies. So I cut this really, really quick right before I went live. Um, and we'll see how it looks. So, um, this is something that I've done a lot with designer paper. So I used one side of the nested labels size. So this is nested label dies 
149638. So they're all that same shape. And then there's just different sizes. So they nest inside of each other. That's why they're nested labels. Okay, so I used one size to cut the, the paper and then I used a smaller size for the white. And so we have done this with, um, like I said, we've done this with designer paper and I wasn't sure if it was gonna cut too much off how it would look. So um, I thought I would just cut it and we could play and see, but that's kind of a fun way to um, to show that off. And then you can use this piece on another card, um, like maybe do a, a circle, that's too big, but a circle sentiment or I don't know, somehow I'll have to come up with something to use that on another card. But this looks really fun too. So let's do, um, well, you know what? My initial thought was to bring in the pretty perennials. This stamp set coordinates with the designer paper. Let me bring in the paper again so you can see. It has sort of those like watercolor flowers and blooms. Um, so I was going to use the happy from here, but you know, I, we've already got that happy birthday out and it looks like it's going to fit really nicely into the label. So let's just go ahead and stamp that and we'll put this together. Oh, that's so fun. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the dimensionals a little different. Usually we pop up the thing in the middle, but this time I'm going to glue, oops, that was the wrong adhesive. <laughs> this time I'm going to glue down the label um, with regular adhesive. And then I'm going to use dimensionals under the background piece. And so we'll pop that out. So that's just going to add some different dimension to our card. Oh, what the heck, just a couple more. <laughs> I'm debating whether we need them on the end. Maybe, let's add just for some extra support and stability. Okay, 20 dimensionals later. Let's peel all those backings off. And these are the same size. This was just the piece I did earlier. So this is the same size as this one and the black is the same size as well. So that is um, three, the white is three and a half by four and three quarters and the black is um, three and three quarter by five. So I'm just trying to put it down with even space all the way around and Nah, <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe I had turned it upside down or something, but it just didn't look centered. So I, I guess I didn't need to put it down first. I should have put it down second. Anyway, that's fine. <laughs> Let's stick it on our card. Um, and I don't know, I kind of, I kind of like it. I was worried that you weren't going to see enough of the design, but I think you still do get a lot of that patchwork design in there. And we could have added, um, we could have added a little ribbon um, in there too. Maybe if this was on dimensionals like this one, but I kind of like how it's the opposite and it, it's like sort of sunken down and the background sticks up. Which one do you like better? Do you like the, um, the vertical one with the circle or do you like the horizontal one with the nested label? Um, it's just such a fun and happy card either way. Okay, so I have some extra pieces cut and this technique is really similar to another one that I also used to do years ago called faux iris twist. And so I thought, let's just go ahead and do that. <laughs> so I've got a piece of, um, this is gonna be a little bit smaller. Um, I've got, this is three and a quarter by three and a quarter and the black is three and a half by three and a half. And I'm going to use the two and a quarter inch circle punch and I'm just centering um, in the punch and we're gonna punch that out. So we've got a circle in the center of the three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Okay, and now we're gonna use these strips again and we're going to create um, a, a pattern on the inside. Um, for this, I'm gonna have an opening in the center of the iris twist 
and I want there to be a sentiment. So I tried to choose the smallest sentiment I could find, and I came up with this one, Let's Cheer You Up, from the Lovely You stamp set. This one is from the annual catalog, and uh, I think it was new this past year, so it's still a pretty new stamp set, and I just adore the sentiments. I like the mixed font with the script and the text or the block font. Um, so Let's Cheer You Up. Oh, you know what? Smile would work really well, too. Um, I'm going to do... I'm gonna do Let's Cheer You Up. Um, so we're gonna do that in the center and I'm gonna stamp it on the circle that we punched um, just because it's convenient. Um, and so now we're going to add the designer paper to the back of this. So for this, you could use the um, adhesive sheets, but after you start layering the um, strips of designer paper, you need to add additional adhesive on top of the paper that, that you continue to layer. So I'm going to just use the regular snail here. Okay, so for this, I'm going to take these pieces and I'm gonna come across the, um, the circle at like an angle. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be the same angle, but essentially I am filling in from the inside and creating some layers with the, the different patterns. And again, like it doesn't have to be straight. So I've got like a, a rhombus or whatever. And here's where you're gonna need that seal as you have paper that is covering where the adhesive was. You're gonna need to add a little bit of adhesive underneath those paper strips. And I'm gonna just add some more adhesive all the way around. Okay, and then we're going to keep going with more designer paper. So, um, just filling in, I like, I wanna get a yellow flower in there. Yeah. So filling in all the way around, different angles. Doesn't have to be perfect. And here's where we just need to start paying attention is as our center is getting smaller, we want to make sure that you can still see the sentiment in the middle. Let me add some adhesive here. Oops, I have a hole, just need to adjust it a bit. That looks good, don't you think? Yes, it looks great. <laughs> all right, let's let's trim all of our edges. And it's hard to see this one because it's on the corner. It's a hot mess back here, but as long as the front looks good, then we're fine. So just trim all those edges. Okay. I've got a mess. Let's just move our mess over so that we can see what we are doing. Okay. So we've got our circle. How did we have that? I think it was this way. So because this is a loose piece, we can kind of move it around and fit it just how we want it to go. So we're just gonna do, you know what, actually, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Well, yep, okay. I'm gonna put adhesive on the back of this and then I am going to hold it Oh, that's not going to be straight in the card, is it? Okay. That is, that's nice and straight. Okay, so I'm lining it up, but I'm only gluing the circle down. I'm going to, again, add some more of that dimension. You know what? Let's do some tear and tape. I feel like some of these are really loose. So just so we don't have any flapping around. I'm gonna use the tear and tape just to secure all the loose ends 
in the back. Okay, so I'm just gonna do like one across each side just to secure all those loose paper ends down. Okay, now we don't have any wiggling. We don't have any loose paper. And we're gonna do some Stampin' Dimensionals in the corners to elevate this because we've got like the just lots of thickness with the different layers that's uneven. So I like to use Stampin' Dimensionals when we have situations like that, um, just to keep everything like nice and even. Um, and where did the, I'm gonna add just two more on the other side here. Okay, stay on there. Um, one here, so I, I'm dimensional and happy again, but I want this to be properly supported all the way around. Okay, do we remember how this was? <laughs> I think that's right. Let's cheer you up. Okay, oh, is that, that's adhesive. Where's my uh, adhesive eraser? All right, so let's put this on a card. This is Flirty Flamingo, just like the other cards. Oh my gosh, that's just so pretty. And then I thought it needs a little something. So whenever I need just a little something, I use my small blossom punch. And in the center of the small blossom punch, I'm going to put some of the matte black dots because it just coordinates so well with the... Um, with the designer paper and, and the black centers. Now, do we, oh gosh, do we like one or do we need, do we need to do three? We, we, we always talk about doing threes. I think I might like this as a square card. Let's just cut this down. So this is a regular card front and I'm just gonna cut it down to four and a quarter so that the finished size of the card is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So that's gonna go on the card base. So we already have our sentiment on there. We don't need the extra room underneath for the sentiments. Okay. I do feel like it benefits from a flower. Okay, Janet says she likes three. Um, thank you guys for sharing. Uh, I don't see any other opinions about three versus one on these flowers. Do you guys think we should do three? I worry that three is overwhelming this little card. Okay, Andrea says three. So K says an odd number. One is an odd number, right? <laughs> um, it does look really lonely though, doesn't it? You know, one thing I wondered about adding was like a leaf or something. So here is like, um, this is the sprig punch. But that, the sprig almost looks too big for for our little, our little bitty, but maybe we just use part of the sprig. Hmm. Okay, Faye and Yolanda and Kay and Lori, I'll say one, Michelle says three in the bottom corner. You don't think that's too much? Maybe we need a yellow one. Hmm, bumblebee, bumblebee, where are you, bumblebee? Trying to grab a scrap of the yellow. Oh my gosh, I'm so stumped on this. <laughs> Sometimes I do, I get so, um, 
I get I get so good until the end and then I just feel stumped. Stumped on how to finish. <laughs> okay. I'm kind of digging this sprig. I think it sort of adds what we need to the flower without overwhelming. What do you think? Bow with the ribbon. This is too small for a bow. Ooh, you guys like the sprigs, okay. That was a bunny ear bow, did you see that? This is so tiny, but I'm making it work. Oh, I like that bow, but I think the bow and the flower is too much together. Doot. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, that made me think of Madonna. <laughs> oh, the bow is too much. I think that's good. Let's glue this down. Where's our glue dots? Um, oh, gosh, I bet they're in the kitchen. Hold on. Let's grab a new box of glue dots from right behind me. Oh, puppy, I'm almost done. These glue dots are just the best for putting down little pieces. So I'm going to start with those. That needs to come in a little bit more. And then let's do a dimensional under the flower. I'm gonna cover up my glue dot. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I love it. All right, there is our trio of cards using the herringbone, uh, faux quilt. What else do you call this technique? Uh, the faux iris twist. Um, so, so many, so many great ways to use this paper. And I showed you all the cards at the beginning. I won't go, th go through them all again, but whether you're using big pieces of this paper as this, the focal point or little strips to include all the colors, the flower and field paper is so gorgeous. So try this technique with any designer paper, but if you really love the flower and field paper, make sure you get a package before celebration ends on Sunday, February 28th. 2021. You can order in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. And look at that. I have it right there. juliedavison.com slash shop. Um, and you can choose a free celebration gift for every $50 that you order. And there's no limit. So if you order a hundred, you can choose two gifts or a level two gift. If you order $300, you get six gifts. I mean, like, why not? Right? <laughs> Okay, that is it for me today. I hope that you enjoyed these cards and that you'll try this technique at home. Be sure to come back tomorrow at 1 o'clock p.m. Central Time here on Facebook and then uploaded later to YouTube. I will be sharing more projects. Let's see what's next for our celebration spotlight. This is what we did today. So tomorrow we will be spotlighting the Touch of Ink stamp set. Ooh, hoo, hoo. I love this one. I have no idea what I'm going to show you. <laughs> so come, come back tomorrow and find out. Happy stamping and have a great day. Bye.